Georgia has been a well-known and a popular tourist destination for a while now. Well, of course, the delicious cuisine, welcoming people, epic nature and affordability makes Georgia an easy choice for many. Georgia is home to the Caucasus Mountains and has plenty of established hiking trails to stretch your legs on. But did you know that a brand new long distance trail that connects Georgia, Armenia and Azerbaijan has been in development in the last years? This is the Transcaucasian Trail and we were planning to attack some parts of it. So after a couple of days in Kutaisi sightseeing and also getting the last needed equipment, we are in the bus station in the morning and we're taking the bus towards the mountains, towards Mestia. So because there are no direct buses all the way to Chuberi, our destination of today, we need to take the bus to Mestia and kind of like drop off um, just before the, that village. We stopped at these crossroads and there's still like 7 to 8 kilometers to go to Chuberi. We will see, we will start walking and maybe we will try to hitchhike to get a car. As soon as we lift our finger, the car stopped and took us two kilometers further down the road. Now we're in a really, really small village here, a couple of houses here, and we have six more kilometers only to go. <laughs> so we didn't even need to walk at all. So we didn't need to walk long, 500 meters and already somebody picked us up and they gave us ice cream. Can you believe? Incredible. So we arrived to Kremo Marhi just a couple of hours ago already. It's a really small village here, but there are a couple of guest houses and we just checked in to the first one that we saw. We were paying for one night 140 lari, which also includes dinner and breakfast. This is around 50 euros. We really don't know is it a good price or a bad price uh, because we just came to this region. It's still 3 p.m. We're gonna have a little bit of walk around in this small village. It's really, really beautiful here. And we're getting ready for the hike. The plan for the next seven to 10 days is to hike the upper Svaneti region. There is a hike that goes about 140 kilometers, I think two or three different passes. It will take about seven to 10 days to complete. It also includes Mestia du Ushkuri hike at the end, which is quite a popular hike in this region. And this trail that we're already on is also part of the longer Transcaucasian trail. The TCT follows through all through Georgia and all through Armenia. This trail is still being developed and in Georgia we decided to take a small part of this hike uh, to see the mountains, the higher mountains of Georgia. It's really exciting to be in the mountains again. Little did we know that that plan was about to change in a few days already. So welcome to TCT, welcome to Transcaucasian Trail. We have been walking for a couple of hours now and we are gaining some elevation. The goal for today is to get to Utviri Pass. We still have 1500 elevation meters to go there. We're gonna camp hopefully somewhere around there just after the pass. The weather is beautiful today. We have been hiking slowly. We are getting used to our new gear, getting used to the heavy backpacks. We are carrying around 20 kilograms. We have been passing by through small farmhouses. Sometimes there are dogs parking. But it hasn't been too bad. A lot of farm animals everywhere, nice people. The nature here is absolutely beautiful. We are seeing some snow-capped mountains in the distance. We are walking in a dense forest. Just made it to Utveri Pass and amazing. We just get here after sunset just crossing the gorge the views here and the full moonrise it's really cold now the sun went down but it's beautiful okay it got really cold really fast the one possible campsite is in 500 meters so we'll try to be fast before it gets really dark and set up camp
So we just got to our guest house for tonight. Uh, we're staying in this local place for 50 lari for a night, which includes uh, dinner and breakfast as well. We just got served uh, our dinner table. And I just wanted to just briefly show you uh, what kind of food uh, are we having in Georgia. This is really homemade. This is really locally produced uh, food here. This is hachapuri, the cheese with bread, the really, really typical thing for Georgia. Uh, some soup, mixed salad with vegetables, some tomato, cucumber. It's white wine. <laughs> Georgia wine. It's wine. <laughs> section has been really hot going. The pass is really really close but the sun is really scorching hot. Not easy this hiking thing. Anyways. Welcome to Bucky Pass. After hiking for four days now the weather got up with us and today and possibly also tomorrow it's really really rainy and it's getting really really cold it was really hot <laughs> until now getting sunburned and uh, it was even like really difficult to hike with that uh, with this heat but now it's raining and it's also even maybe promising snow because of this weather it's really complicated to hike we took uh, a day off in the uh, in the guest house so we are staying in Matsuri having a little bit of rest and just uh, sheltering from the rain yeah, this guest house is nice, you get food here, it's really comfortable, it's warm, so it's nice. The moment I'm in the balcony and it's getting really cold here, so time to go back inside. So we stayed in Matsuri actually for two full days and three nights. The main reason was because there was a lot of rain. The other reason that uh, we started to get a bit sick. Like I was actually yesterday night, the night before I was puking and having some stomach issues. So like I don't know if it was something that we ate or we drink in there, but yeah, the health has also not been that good. Uh, anyways, the weather is better today and the health is a little bit better. So we try to keep on pushing today and keep on hiking. Today we're trying to get to Guli Pass, which is 2,900 meters above sea level. And after Guli Pass, there is Mestia village, Mestia town. After another climb, we have made it to Huguli Pass, 2,900 meters. Just behind me as well, you can see the magnificent Uspa. After hiking for 8 days, we arrived in Mestia, the hiking mecca of Georgia. Each year, thousands of people make their way into this gateway to Svaneti region. Besides plenty of hiking and mountaineering opportunities, one can also visit Mestia for mountain skiing in the winter and also learn about the unique local culture and history. We have currently made it to the most popular multi-day hiking route in uh, Georgia. This goes from uh, Mestia to Shkuli and it's possible to do this route in two to four days, depending 
how long days you do, uh, but it's also really possible to do it in a guest house. You don't really need to wear camping equipment for this trail specifically. So like in this trail, we have been seeing a lot more hikers than we have seen until now. But at the same time, it hasn't been like that much that I really, really thought. Uh, maybe it's the end of the season because it's already September, but it has been still really peaceful. Just been hiking with some people uh, together from time to time. It's beautiful, the upper Sunedi, the higher Caucasus uh, mountain range, beautiful. We camped yesterday. Uh, we're going to be continuing today and we are hoping to camp today as well and we will be hopefully camping next to or close to a glacier actually so it's pretty pretty uh, exciting to be here happy monday morning welcome to adishi the glacier Definitely the hardest obstacle on this trail so far. This river is coming straight from this glacier that we went to visit in the morning. It's super, super freezing cold. Put it there for two seconds and you're already, I wanna get out because it's like really, really cold. That was really, really mentally hard crossing. But we are all through it safe. And welcome to Skunderi Pass, 2720 meters in elevation. We have successfully completed the first stage in hiking in Georgia, the Upper Suoneti. It took us 12 days, including two days resting because of the rain and also because of a little sickness. Yesterday we took a rest day in Uskuli and now we're gonna continue hiking. The original plan was to stop hiking here and move on to Armenia, hike there. But due to the recent developments in Armenia, Azerbaijan border, it's not the wisest to go and hike the southern part of Armenia. We have completely changed our plans and this is not the end of hiking in Georgia. This is still the beginning. We're gonna continue from here, following the Transcaucasian Trail, the DCT Trail, which is still in development, and hike south. We will see how far we go, day by day, hour by hour, but maybe, who knows, we will reach the border of Armenia by foot from here. These days, today, and the next few days, promising really, really rainy, really stor stormy. We were eager to leave the place and not stay in a guest house for four days. At the moment, it's not raining, and we're continuing hiking. Let's hope the weather holds up a little bit. Next up, in about six to seven hours. So we just crossed the Sagar Pass at 2,700 meters or so. I must say the pass today, people might say it's it's boring, but at the same time, we have been really enjoying this actually. We were going uphill uh, in eight kilometers and we gained about 600 meters in elevation. So it's kind of like gentle incline along this uh, dirt road. Not many cars, we saw like two or three cars and almost no people. There are some mountains around. It's actually really beautiful here as well, I would say. But we have been really enjoying um, doing this gentle, a bit more gentle walk, uh, rather than just climbing up and down all the time with the heavy elevations that we have been doing until now in uh, Svanetti. We are gonna have about three to four hours to the, to the next village to walk everything downhill at the moment. Uh, now we will be exiting the high Caucasus mountains, basically going to be going away from these high snow-capped peaks, big, big mountain ranges. And in, in the next days, we're gonna be entering a whole different terrain of Georgia, I'm guessing. So uh, this place really is something. Uh, yesterday we made it to a small village um, called Tsano. There's only a handful of houses here and people usually live here on summertime. In the winter time there's nobody here. And there's one guest house here and yeah the two guys were here. Like all of those houses are like half abandoned and they have, they have made it like really kind of like a nice um, place here 
and we can see like on the walls like a lot of people have been coming here because this is like the only stop on the on the road on the way to Skuli. We got really <clears throat> delicious uh, dinner here yesterday and the guy started to uh, pour uh, many many shots of cha cha, local alcohol, the local spirit and uh, of course there are like this local wine here and everything is homemade. The evening quite got quite long. This is really something special. It's a bit like um, run down, so the walls are not that good and beds are old and everything, but it, it has a certain vibe in here. Uh, so at the moment we are uh, gonna have breakfast and gonna continue walking uh, towards uh, Mele today. As we began the next section of the trail, the heavy rains were not giving us any mercy. The rain is really strong and we're walking in this canyon. It makes me worried a bit because this area is really prone to landslides and specifically with the rain. We literally have no place to go. We just need to keep on walking. There's no shelter here. And sometimes we were forced to stay put for days. But hiking in autumn is always not that bad. Walking amongst the golden forest and colorful trees was truly magical. As we were approaching another mountain pass, I got a feeling that we might be in for some trouble. An early snow had covered the range that we were planning to cross. Good morning. Yesterday night was definitely the coldest uh, so far. The ground is frozen around us. Our water is frozen inside the tent. We tried to pack up really fast, tried to cross this pass right in the morning. It's gonna be about two hours. 600 meters elevation to get up there. There is snow there, so we will see how can we manage to climb over that pass today. So we're trying to go up of this steep grassy hill. I think it's like 45 degrees angle or a bit less. There's also snow already here and we're definitely not prepared for snow. We don't have crampons or anything, so we are really late in the season. It's a bit tricky section at the moment. Hope we will get over it and we will see how is it up there. Can we get over the pass or not? Change of plans. This pass is currently not crossable. There is a lot of snow. The grass uh, on the snow, it gets really, really slippery. So we have been trying uh, for a while now, for an hour or more, uh, tried to get up, but actually we should have turned back already some time ago. We feel we are being a bit uh, stupid and not responsible that we are trying to do this. It can end really badly if uh, just one step goes wrong. Uh, we already came too far, so now it's gonna be really difficult to go back down again. Yeah, we need to turn around. That's, that's the smarter thing to do at the moment. It was truly a tough decision to stop the climb and turn back. From that location, it was a one and a half day hike to civilization in any direction. After a few weeks in the mountains and villages, we were running out of some basics, cooking gas and food. So we're trying to get out from Mela and we're planning to go to Kutaisi for a couple of days to restock. The, the buses from Mela go every other day, but today is not any other day. So today there are no buses. So we're trying to hitchhike. Since this village is really far from everything, we have been walking for half an hour now and we haven't seen any cars. Hitchhiking is quite popular in uh, Georgia and people tend to pick you up quite easily. So I think it won't be a problem, but we just need to get out from this village somehow. Let's hope that somebody's gonna pass at some point. Two hours later and we have walked six kilometers. No luck so far. But soon after we got picked up by a loading truck. And for the second ride, due to lack of space, our bags had to be attached to the roof. These guys took us to the nearest town, Lenteki, from where there was a bus all the way to Gutaisi. It took us four full days in order to get to Gutaisi, restock and to rejoin the trail again in Oni. After a couple of days in Gutaisi restocking, we are back on the hiking trail. We are back on Transcaucasian Trail. Yesterday we climbed another forest here. The trails are sometimes really not even visible. We camped on a high ridge. In the morning it started to drizzle a bit and we were walking in the clouds. One of the things about Georgia and the forests here is that there are bears around here. 
we have seen quite so many bird droppings yesterday and today some of them seem pretty really fresh like from the last 24 hours or even less we bought a bell a cow bell and also we're speaking to each other uh, quite often basically what we're trying to do is to make the beers know that we are here that we are in this forest that we are on these trails uh, this place it's magical, as you can see around me, we are in the clouds. No visibility. Soon we will descend back inside of the forest. So, let's keep on hiking in these magical places in Georgia. And it started to rain. This forest, absolutely beautiful, autumn colors. But as this trail is still in development, in some parts, there's no trail yet. So at the moment there's like a GPS track that goes from here. We need to kind of like find our way through the bushes at the moment. Also, it's raining. We are soaked, our boots are soaked. It's fun. We are still soaked. We have lost the trail a couple of times now, but we still need to keep on pushing. Uh, there's still quite some time to get out from here and now we're entering a dark, dark forest. That day turned out to be one of the toughest and longest on the trail. The distance to our destination was a lot longer than expected. The last few hours we walked with headlamps in the dark on muddy trails and through multiple river crossings. For this hike in Georgia and Armenia in the autumn season, we needed to get some extra hiking gear that is also good for the cold. What are we carrying in the backpack? First, I think the most important things was the sleeping bags and the sleeping mats. I normally go with really lightweight, really thin like sleeping mats, but this time we got self-inflating sleeping mats. We needed a warmer solution for sleeping, so we got these mats from Sea to Summit that are really specific, like there are female and male. Each one of the mats has their own temperature and it keeps different parts of of your body uh, warmer. After that, we got the sleeping bags. The sleeping bag I actually already had, but we need to get the new one for Ursula. So the comfort uh, is around zero degrees for these ones. And extra to that, we got the liners. This is synthetic thermolite liner. This is a regular cotton liner. As we have experienced, the liners actually like really give a lot more warmth when you're inside of the sleeping bag. So these are the most important things that you need for camping out and sleeping in the colder weather. We have experienced sleeping in minus five degrees until now. Besides that, one of a good addition for our gear was a new lightweight tent. The normal one that I usually have so far is 2.5 kilograms Decathlon tent, which is a bit bulky and really large for, from its package. We really wanted to get something more lightweight and more smaller packaged. This tent is only 1.65 kilograms and it packs really smaller than the regular dome tents. Really easy to put it up. For two people it gets a little bit tight but it's still manageable and we have been doing just fine with this tent. We have started to really like this tent just because the lightweight, the compact and the ease of use. Personally for me I needed a new backpack just because my old backpack was already 8 years old and it was not really usable anymore. So I got the new backpack, the Osprey Atmos 65, 65 liter backpack. I've been really enjoying this backpack. Uh, well, the best thing of this backpack is how the back part is being built. It's really easy on the body. So I've been carrying 22-23 kilos during this trip which is quite a lot. But with this backpack, it really doesn't feel that much. We got the opportunity to rent some equipment. Renting a, a backpack for a long trail was one of the, the chances that I, I got. So I, I rented this, this backpack. Even I have my own backpack. This was more appropriate to uh, a hike like this, uh, a long, long trail. One of the important things for uh, long distance trekking or mountain trekking in general are the hiking poles. I personally, I haven't been using that them that much in my previous hikes, but for uh, higher mountains and for like steeper mountains, it's good to have uh, the poles that are good for your knees and they take a lot of pressure off. We have all of our layered clothes in uh, one of those bags. This is a down jacket and this is my rain cloak. Right, personally, I'm carrying camera gear. This is a drone bag and this is the camera bag. These things weigh total uh, three kilograms. And of course, we have food. We're trying to carry food for at least a couple of days uh, in case we need to stay uh, camping for a longer time. And in here, we have kitchen. It's just a small little stove. 
uh, the gas and the pot for that, a few cups, a couple of foldable bowls. Because we needed all of this uh, gear that we didn't have, we turned to uh, Matka Malm. We got a lot of help from them choosing the right gear. We spent two full days in their shop and just choosing the right gear for us and what is perfect for us and what is good for the season and to make sure that we're going to have a good experience. So I want to say a huge thank you to Matka Malm, an Estonian hiking equipment uh, retailer who has had helped us a lot uh, with this hike. We were hiking on this small gentle uh, village road. This low road is made from concrete and it goes through many many villages and it has like hills on the both sides and follows a river. But that also means that there are no like really good camping places here and since this place is also not on the tourist map like there are no guest houses or hotels in this area. Anyways, it was starting to get dark and we really needed to find a place to camp or uh, where to stay. So we started to ask people, um, like maybe we can put a tent in their uh, garden or maybe they know a place where to sleep or something like this. In the second try, uh, we were like in the village center or something, there was a group of guys. I tried to ask in my really, really broken uh, Russian and trying to like have a conversation. Just a couple of minutes later, they directed us to this house here. So this is not the guest house or anything, but it seems like some people stay here from time to time, but there's like nobody here. And one guy directed us here and opened the door and was like, hey, you can stay in here tonight. <laughs> I was like, but what about the people who live here or something? Oh, they're somewhere like away, but I would like uh, give them a call and uh, let, them, let them know that you're here. Of course, this place is not fancy or anything, but like it's a room uh, with three beds in here, really clean in here. There's some uh, kitchen stuff in the corner. There's a stove. So yeah, just this small room in this uh, in this house. And they said, yeah, you can stay in here, no charge. And yeah, you can just go in the morning. Talk about Georgian hospitality or, uh, or the options that present to you if you just ask people. How crazy is that? As you could see, the hospitality in Georgia was outstanding. We gladly used the opportunities to stay in local guest houses to get to know their homes, culture and cuisine. Georgians still live close with the nature and almost all of the food on the table is homemade. And so we're leaving Tsanavi to begin the last 5-6 day section of this city Georgia before reaching the border with Armenia. It should be around 125 kilometers. Uh, the landscapes should be still really surprising with some volcanic formations on the way. Let's go to the forest. Do you recognize this marking on this tree? Maybe it's familiar for you. It's the quite generally used trail mark that is used all over the world. The last time we have seen this mark was already a couple of weeks ago because the last weeks we have been walking on the trails that are still in development and are not marked actually. After a long time, there is a mark and that is quite interesting and kind of cool to see a trail marking again. We finally managed to see a beer today. It was just like walking down the hill. I suddenly saw how a big uh, body ran across the path. I think it was like maybe around 30 meters uh, right in front of us. So yeah, incredible. That's the first encounter of bears in wild nature. I have seen them. We have seen them uh, in Romania before, but but now uh, we saw one in the wild nature. So yeah, there are bears in these forests, uh, which is cool to see. So we are having a bit of late breakfast today and as we are waiting for our porridges to be ready I wanted to talk about the food that we are having during hiking uh, long distance hiking trail. First of all, almost half or more of the foods uh, we have been actually getting from the guest houses. Really delicious homemade cuisine. All of the food is made by the families, by the mothers themselves. All of the potatoes, the cheese, uh, the bread, the hachapuri. Vegetable soups and, and sauces like the Georgian ketchup and things like this and also like homemade beans. wine and beans and like everything is made by themselves so like it's really delicious and it's really filling and all the time 
uh, we have a lot of leftovers because, because we just can't finish everything. The other half of the time we need to uh, eat uh, from our backpacks. What are we carrying with us? First of all, uh, what we get are the ready meals. We took some of the ready meals from Estonia with us, which we got from Matkamail. These meals are ready, they're in the boxes and what is, what is really special about them, they're not like the dried meals. They're actually ready meals and they have this like heating system inside of them and they only require really a little bit of water for the heating system to start working and it heats the meal up. So it's good in the conditions where you don't have water sources nearby, for example. But the minus for this one is it's quite heavy, like it's 300 grams per one meal. And if you want for two people, then it's already 600 grams you need to carry with you. The other option is the dry meals, a bit like lighter, 150 grams per, uh, per package. But in there you need to put more water, like 200 or 300 milliliters of water. So these are the easiest options that you can take for hiking. Besides that, what we have been having for breakfast, food, for example, in here in Georgia, porridges that you don't need to boil. You just add the boiled water to the porridge. It's ready in like five to six minutes. What we like to add sometimes is, for example, uh, granola, like chocolate granola. Very rich granola. Actually having this granola or a misli, really easy to have just with hot water. You just add hot water, boiled water and it's already a full meal and uh, you can have a really simple breakfast like this. You can buy it in any grocery store uh, for lunch and dinner. Um, one of our favorite things to eat is uh, noodles, the ramen noodles. Also really easy, you just boil hot water onto them and they're ready in uh, five to ten minutes and uh, they're really light and uh, I must say they're really delicious. They are really tasty. We're trying to find new things to eat and the other thing that we discovered is for example couscous. Also really easy to um, prepare. You just boil hot water and then you pour couscous inside of it. You let it sit and then um, it just absorbs the water and in 10 minutes the meal is done. It doesn't have a lot of taste itself so it's important to add some of the things, some spices inside of it. If, if it's the season it's perfect to have some cucumbers or carrots, tomatoes and pepper and just, just putting it inside the couscous and with some of the spices really really delicious as well in in guest house we boil eggs we bring the full tomato full cucumbers and full carrots if we find bread in the way we we eat egg bread and and vegetables it's really fresh and easy for doing it especially in georgia it's easy to get some fresh bread from one of the villages uh, take some cucumber tomato and you already have your lunch of course, uh, you need to have some kind of snacks for like uh, lunch or like to have some energy. We make a mix. We call it the magic bag. Here it's easy to get some walnuts, some almonds, put some peanuts, pumpkin seeds. We added some dried fruits like raisins or whatever you find. And of course, we add some M&Ms. It gives you energy. You have the mix of salty and sweet. All of these things, it's good to put in a Ziploc bags. Uh, so like you can take them out from the original packages because they can be really bulky and uh, not really convenient and they can break. So the Ziploc bags have been really useful to uh, prepare those mixes or take your uh, couscous or whatever we do. Besides these ones, of course, some Snickers or uh, some granola bars. Anyways, I think our breakfast is ready now or more uh, brunch is ready now. So uh, yeah, let's start eating. So we begin this hike, hiking along the big and majestic snow-capped peaks in higher Caucasus mountain range. After a couple of weeks we came down to the lowlands and we were hiking amongst the forest, amongst a lot of rain and a lot of greenery and the beautiful, beautiful autumn colors. And now we're entering South Georgia. We are coming into this volcanic open fields landscape. We just crossed the pass in here and the first views upon these fields are literally incredible. I can see the lake from here, Tabaskuri Lake, which is about eight or nine kilometers from here. Today we're gonna stay in there. And after that, we still have three or four days to go until the border of Armenia, which is gonna mark the end point of this time trekking in Georgia. Final stretch is beginning. The final stage is beginning. These magnificent views are in front of us. Absolutely beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Going over that mountain pass brought us to a different world, a mysterious fairy tale land with wide open fields and grassy steps. The 
landscape was beautiful but harsh, and the heavy bone chilling winds were ruthless. Okay, so what is happening right now? We were hiking along these grasslands and there's like a lot of a lot of groups of sheep and a lot of a lot of uh, sheep farmers uh, in here. All of them have a lot of dogs which made it a bit like dangerous even to walk through these areas because the dogs sometimes get really really aggressive towards the passerby. Anyways, what happened? We saw so many different groups coming up so we decided that it's better to ask one of them to uh, maybe stay with them so maybe it's more safer uh, than us just camping here um, by ourselves also it was gonna start raining and it's gonna get colder uh, we, we wanted to camp next to one lake but like it might not be that good if this uh, there's full of these uh, shepherd dogs around us we asked uh, one of them can we stay with them and this is Azeri family from Azerbaijan they invited us to their home so look at this we are staying inside of the tent, inside of their home. This is their sheep here, and there are these kind of camps around us. Uh, I think there are like five, six, these kind of camps all around us. I'm just wearing almost nothing because I came from inside to outside to record this. They have the stove there and it's really, really hot. So tonight they offered us their beds to sleep inside their home. They opened the doors for us and what an incredible experience. We are staying tonight with Azari uh, Shepherd family in the mountains of Georgia. We wanted to sleep in our tent or on our mattresses, but the guys forced us to take the beds as they slept on the floor themselves. In the morning, we left the shepherd camp forever grateful and content. <laughs> Here we are in Kamtani in a beautiful guest house and unfortunately this time there's not gonna be an epic ending video. This is where we're gonna stop hiking the Transcaucasian Trail in Georgia. It's only 28 kilometers from here to the border but the weather has been ruthless. We have been waiting here uh, for the weather to get better, for the rain to stop. It's still really cloudy and it's gonna be a really really rainy day today. It shows that it's gonna be similar for the next week. So there's no point for us to stay here to wait until the better weather and there's no point for us to walk more than 10 hours in the pouring rain. So we're already so close to the border so we decide to finish here this time. We're gonna take the bus all the way to Tbilisi and then to Kutaisi from here. So um, at that point I got a bit lost for words. This trail definitely had its challenges but has also been amazingly rewarding. Experiences like walking through ice-cold glacier streams, turning back from a mountain pass due to snow, seeing a bear running across the trail, sleeping in empty houses and even in a shepherd camp will definitely stay in your minds forever. As we started in Chuberi and were originally not planning to hike the whole T-City Georgia, 
we are still missing a part of the full route closer to the Black Sea. Definitely something to come back for. We want to say a huge thanks to the Transcaucasian Trail Association for the tremendous work they have been doing with this trail. It is such a big effort and these trails through Armenia, Azerbaijan and Georgia are simply world class. Also a big thanks to Matkamal for helping us with the equipment and to Prosawood for elegant sunglasses for this project. Thank you for coming along and until next time.